Hey there! Glad to have you guys in finding the replay on this scope. This is actually going to be a really fun one, and I think it's a first. I'm not a, I'm not exactly a, a sure if it's a first or not, but um, I'm going to be taking some live Q&A as I straighten my hair. So thanks so much for jumping on as I straighten my hair. Let me get this down first. Why do I get all these crazies? All right, so my name is Christine, and what I do is I help independent contractors and entrepreneurs be able to figure out how to create systems that will duplicate amongst their team so that everyone can have success. So my forte has been, I've been the trainer of the trainers. I like to figure out the process on how to do something and then boil it down in cliff notes and teach people how to do it. So that's what I'll do here, of course, on these scopes as well. And I'm glad that you are here. If you can, you can also share this. Apple users swipe to the right and just look down, you're gonna see the share button. Android, you swipe up and look down, you're gonna see the share button. This will share to Twitter, but you can also take the link and deposit it anywhere that you want. Tapping the screen gives the broadcaster hearts and lets them know, oh, that's a great thing, you're doing a great job, that's a good topic, I agree. So I'm glad that you guys are here. We got a lot of people coming on in. Thanks so much for saying that about my hair. I went and got it done today, even though you can't tell because I got all the stragglers and some stuff. Um, I had to go get it done today and I ended up getting a trim and she blew it out. I was like, okay, I guess I'm not working out today then. <laughs> Gotta take advantage of the blowouts, you know? Hey, good, I see we got some first timers here. Chick Singer, awesome to see you here. This is an exciting broadcast. I'm going to be playing live audio, not live audio, your audio of your questions and answering questions on here. I'm also going to be uh, taking some questions from you guys, of course, in the comments since you're here live, but I just won't have your audio, of course. But I will do the five audios that I have. Awesome to see you here, Blossy, and Kelly Yeomans is here as well. We got a lot of good people jumping on, but for those of you who are jumping on now, of course, my name is Christine and I do help boil it down for entrepreneurs. I figure it out for you. I'm the Cliff Notes girl. I'm a no-nonsense, direct to the point, just here's the information, do it, and you can be a success. The a level of you doing it is actually up to you. So I'm glad to see you guys are in here. Trey's in the house from northern New York, down the road from where I used to live. I'm so glad you watch every scope. I appreciate that, Myra. Iowa, who is a first timer? So if you're a first timer, write new in the comments so that I know that you are new to this. This is always fun. And those of you who are new, you're probably wondering, what are these hearts? What does that mean? How do I make that happen? I want hearts, I want hearts. Ooh, we got new. We got OHCC, Garrett Smith, Carrie 8B52, Emily Benz. Perfect. Oh, Emily did what I love that people do. Put your name in your comments too so that I can easily see it. We got uh, TC Chango, I think it was. Bethany Taylor, second timer. Awesome. Misty coming in from Maui. Great. We got a lot of people jumping on. So cool. We got some Texans up in the house. Michelle's a first timer. We got a lot going on. So I'm going to be taking, of course, your questions as well. I've got five questions from a lot of the scopers that follow me. They sent me their audio questions, and we're going to be playing them, and I'll answer them, of course, live on the fly. And uh, this, of course, is going to be able to help you grow your business. So I welcome you guys to this, and I'm just going to turn down my light just a little bit. Okay, it's always a delicate thing doing your live scopes because you can't control a coughing attack. You can't control any of that. So I'm going to get rolling and I'm so glad that you are here. So for those of you who are trying to figure out what those hearts are and you want your own hearts, tapping the screen. So if you want to test it out, tapping the screen will create hearts. And what hearts mean are that they let the broadcaster know that they love you love what they're talking about. You agree. This is good stuff. I just want to support you because you give a lot of free training. Hopefully that makes sense. And these broadcasts only stay available on Periscope for 24 hours. So it kind of forces you to get on live because I know a lot of scopers don't save their videos to the public. Some of them will require you to opt in to be able to get access to them, but I don't want to make it so hard for you. I put all my downloads on my YouTube channel. You can go to youtube.com slash Christine Dwyer. I am still catching up because I decided to do that after weeks of doing scopes. So I like to load up about one or two of my past scopes. So I'm catching up, they're slowly getting up there, um, but hopefully this is helpful. So thanks so much. And I see that we are over the 150 capacity. So guess what I'm gonna do? I'm going to put my Twitter feed also on the in front of me. So I'm going to take questions from the comments, you could put comments there. You can tweet me, and the way to tweet me without leaving the broadcast, this is known as a hack, 
is to Apple users swipe to the right and scroll down. You're going to see the share button. Click share for Twitter, but then just erase all the information except for my name at Christine Dwyer and then write your question. And then I'll be able to see that there. Android, you swipe up and you do the exact same thing. Thanks so much. I appreciate the flowers being in the video. Um, they're, they're, they're real, right? Okay, let's get going. Let's take the first question. It's from Harold and I'm going to play Harold's question and then I'll answer it and then we'll just kind of discuss after and see what you guys think about it and then we'll move on. All right, we good? You guys ready for this? I think, and I and I did say a Periscope first. If, if I'm wrong, I probably am, but I've never seen anyone doing this, but has anybody been doing live audios aside from like a split screen Skype, but just playing other people's voices for like a Q&A? Has anyone done that yet? I don't think so, but I could be wrong. I'm probably completely wrong, but I am saying that it's a first. It's a first for me. <laughs> so I am going to be doing this here. And also I run a podcast and I put it, I'll be doing it on my podcast too. I have a podcast called The Platinum Edge. So go ahead and find that. Oh, Pat Flynn does, darn it. Garrett, oh well, Pat's awesome. He is awesome. And I'm, of course he is. Of course he's the one doing it. He is so brainy. He knows how to do that stuff. Well, I'm the first girl. <laughs> Let's say that. Let's go with Harold's question. So I've got Harold's question queued up here. If you guys are ready to listen, I'm going to play it. And then because this is the first time, let me know if this sounds okay. Like you can hear it. You ready? Here we go. Hello, Christine. This is Harold Krieger. And I do have a, a question that I've been struggling with for quite a while. I also have a website if you want to check it out and give me some ideas on. It's still a work in progress. It's called hk3fitness.com. And my question, which is also a big problem with me, apparently I will start talking to someone just in general, never met them, like what you say. And I have no problem with talking to strangers, believe me. But the problem is I turn into an infomercial. Then, of course, they turn off, they have a reason to walk away or whatever, so I don't get any type of uh, increase in being able to help people to live a better life, to get out of it what I did. I just trying to pay it forward, but unfortunately, so the question then would be, how do you not sound like an infomercial? I can't help it. I'm just so excited about the whole thing. I just keep on going. So... How's that? Was that good? So Harold's question was one of the longer ones. So that was the longest one that we have. Was that good? It is a real issue. Totally, Elizabeth. I completely agree. So is that a problem for any of you guys? Yes? No? Or do you know other people that have that problem as well? Where when they start to get a conversation, they do. They start throwing up and they just start talking about their business it's a very common problem. It's like hard to have conversations, especially with someone that you know is in a business like that. And I was actually thinking about this being a title for a future scope prior to listening to Harold's question. So thank you, Harold, for sending that off to my speak pipe. And if you guys want to submit your questions to be featured on my podcast or on the scope, all you got to do is go to speakpipe dot com slash Christine Dwyer and submit your audio and I can totally play that. But um, I was thinking of this and here's a quick analogy. Think about it. If you owned a coffee shop, so just imagine you own a coffee shop and many of you could, I don't know. But if you own a coffee shop, that person, when they get into say a party situation, most of the time their friends aren't scared to talk to that guy or that girl because even though he's a business owner, they're not assuming that he's going to come up and start to promote the latte of the day or that he's going to be giving them coupons to come in. Most of the times when it's a brick and mortar business, a lot of the times people aren't aggressive, especially in social situations with friends. But when it comes to network marketing especially, and, I, and that's what I'm assuming and I could be completely wrong, but just assuming by some of the stuff that Harold said that he's in network marketing, I maybe assume the same one I'm in, that um, you start to get labeled because you start to get labeled that that all you ever talk about is how great this product is and the logo wear that you're wearing and that you just really um, cannot talk about anything else in life but your business. So how do you get over that? Here's the thing. The way you get over 
over talking about your business or talking and sounding like an infomercial is to stop talking. The best way you can handle any conversation is to ask questions. So you want to become more proficient in leading a conversation by asking better questions and just go into your conversation. So I know he said he had no intention to always sound like an infomercial, but he just naturally does and he can't help it and he hates it. So I think that's what he said, I'm interpreting him. So it's not really about what you're going to say. Does anybody know who people love to talk about the most? Put it in comments. Who do people love to talk about the most? If you can answer that question, put it in comments. Themselves, 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 themselves. That is the truth. You guys are right. So people love to talk about themselves. So when you're in any conversation, be it a friend, it's an acquaintance, or it's a brand new stranger, really get in the habit of not really talking so much about you, but really having conversations about them and diving deep into question after question after question. So it's more about like clarification, more clarification. So it's not investigation, you're not investigating them, but really you just wanna start asking more questions and this takes practice. So you're not gonna be perfect, you're just gonna keep knowing that it's gonna get better. But I did do a scope about it and I was talking about my Starbucks guy that I was talking to and he knows nothing about me but I know a ton about him. And that was because question kind of naturally derived. So here's a um, something that you can do that works is you basically, you know, come up to whatever the situation is, is you go and ask them a question and then listen to their response. So whatever their response is, then you basically want to know more about that response. So to give you an example, so say for instance, you are at a weekend fair, you're at a weekend fair, it's a street fair and you are standing at a booth checking out some jewelry or whatever with someone and you want to strike up conversation because building your business, you just have to get in the habit of striking up conversation first. So just do it more often and the jitters get out and you just become normal <laughs> because I know when you have a business to offer, we, we really want to kind of lead everybody to that water of our business. But if you think about it, about every 20 conversations you have, maybe about two to four of them would actually lead that person to something about your business. So the majority of your conversations shouldn't go to about your business. So try not to force them to go that way. But if you're standing at that crap and you're talking about jewelry, um, or you're there about jewelry, you can initiate the conversation and say, is this your first time coming to the fair? And then when they respond, here's the critical point. Listen, listen to what they say. Stop thinking about your next question. Don't even plan a next question because once you plan the next question or start pressuring yourself to think about something, you're not listening to anything they say so that now when they stop talking, you're paralyzed. You're like, um, um, so do you have a dog? Um, do you work out? Like you're weird now. So when they answer, really listen. So if they say, oh no, this is my first time. I just moved here. Now, perfect. Really? You moved here from where? Where'd you live? Oh, I used to live in the North. Me too. I used to live in New York. What part? Where'd you live? Everything derives off of where that person was. Why did you move here? Did you get a new job? What is it that you do? Do you have family? So you're basically asking them questions just because you're interested in them and you're not trying to find out what their street address is, what kind of car they drive and all that type of stuff. Of course, that's different. So does that make sense? Yeah, getting nervous while you're talking definitely is common. It's very common and it's just a matter of constantly getting out there, practicing. And the best way to practice is pick opportune times where you don't have time to do long conversations. So if you've got moments where the pressure of moving in and out of a situation is like this, like you can't talk long to that person, that's the best time to practice because then you're moving on. Could talk to days for people, ask you questions. Yeah, I love to take that challenge. This is, sorry, I got my email on. Let me turn that off. I actually love to take this challenge where I will, I can't turn it off. It's got an error somewhere. Um, I will challenge myself to not talk about myself, but to really drive into an interesting question about them. I want them to talk about them as much as possible. And I challenge myself with that. I make it kind of like a game. So hopefully that will help a little bit. Any other questions in regards to Harold's question? 
Thanks so much for all those hearts. I really appreciate those hearts. Green, red, orange. You guys are kind. Blue, brown. Awesome. Perfect. All right, so we're going to move on to the next audio question. Unless you guys got a question you want to ask right now before I jump into the next audio one. But then some people will be like, why are you interrogating me? No, because you're not interrogating them. It's natural conversations. It's showing interest. Your questions can sound um, interrogating if they don't make sense. So if it doesn't uh, bridge off of their last statement or how they were talking. So for instance, if they said, well, I just moved here. And then you say, really? Where's your house? What's the street address? Like something that's weird that doesn't relate to exactly a stranger to stranger conversation. So thank you so much there, Coach Shine. Appreciate that. I did go to the hair salon a little bit today and I do have a lot of frizzies, so I should select things down. Good. Any other questions that you guys want to ask now before I play the next question? And again, if you want to submit your question so that your audio can be played, go to, what if they stop talking? Do you keep going? Good question. Let me talk about that. Go to speak pipe dot com slash Christine Dwyer and submit your question. So what if they just stop talking? Take a hint. They don't want to talk. Okay. So you can't make everyone talk to you. There's some people that are just having a bad day. They just are not interested. Take a hint. Start learning body language. When someone eyes skate around or they are turning their body away from you, that means they don't want to talk to you. You can't talk to everyone. Just start talking to the people who are open to it. And if you start a conversation and it's not going good or it's a bomb, it's a train wreck, then excuse yourself. Oh my gosh, I forgot. I got to go pick up my daughter. Get out. Whatever it is. All right. Any other questions? Do you want me to play the next one? Let me go home. This one now. Body language is super important. Do you ever follow up ever? Yeah, it depends how I left the conversation. So for instance, if I left the conversation and I found out that that person does closet redesign, I'm like, oh my gosh, can I have your card because my closet is a train wreck and I need to build a new closet. Of course, I'm going to follow up with them. And if I left the conversation relative to my business, of course, I've got their contact information because the conversation wasn't me icky going, here, I got a business, do business with me. That's icky. So no, I'm not following up with that person because I was this person and I will never do that. But of course, I'm going to follow up with someone if they took my contact information and I got theirs because the conversation was positive. They were excited. They were like, oh my gosh, I'm so glad I met you. I really wanted to get into doing that. That's how those conversations are. I don't have conversations where someone's like, um... No, I, I really don't want to give you my info. Are you fine here? And then now me stalk them. Mm -mm, no, that's not a conversation. That's you forcing yourself on your on that person's business. All right, so let's do the next one and let's discuss after. So the next one, we're going to be talking to Shannon. So let's play Shannon's audio. Here we go. Hi, Christine. This is Shannon Sproul. My question is for Facebook. For Affinity of your post, is it better to hit reply to somebody's comment and write back to them or for affinity purposes to boost the posts up in the feeds, should you just make a whole new comment and tag them in it? That's Shannon's question. Thanks again, Shannon, for submitting that question for me. That's a great question and many of the rest of these questions are going to be social media related. So. The question is regards to when someone comments on one of your comments or your posts, should you just directly reply to them in that comment that they wrote? Is that better for your Facebook affinity? Does Facebook like you better that way? Or should you create a brand new post and tag the person in the post? My personal opinion, and boosting it, sorry, and boosting that post. So my personal opinion, let's talk about boosting. So boosting, if you're not familiar with boosting, is if you have a post on Facebook, Facebook is going to say to you, hey, hey, this post is doing good. It could do better if you put some money down. Come on, come on, hit this boost button. That's what Facebook does, right? And you're like, really? Really? Where's my money? Let me pay. That's what Facebook does. Facebook wants you to be excited about giving them money because they want to show you this is something good. There's conflicting results in terms of boost to not boost, boost to not boost. And I'm going to give you my opinion, take it or leave it. So my mentor says, don't boost. Okay. And I'm like, okay, I won't boost anymore. So for instance, she suggests 
stop paying for Facebook ads to increase your likes because you're basically paying Facebook to increase your likes, but you're not getting anything more out of it. Who cares about another like? It's not taking that person anywhere. So you now just gave Facebook more money. So if you don't have a call to action or an opt-in form or way to support someone, then that's the better place to put your money. So boosting. Now my mentor says not to pay for boosting. So I don't know the ins and outs 100% of Facebook. I am a constant studier, but it's kind of this, all right? And you gotta use your best judgment. So boosting in general, use your best judgment. I personally choose not to boost. I have boosted sporadically. Sometimes I'll notice that a post does very well if I boost. Sometimes I notice a post doesn't do very well if I boost. So you gotta play it out. Here's one thing that I've done. I had one post that was amazingly doing great in an organic reach, meaning I didn't pay for any part of it. It was just people wanted it and they were sharing it and it was getting a lot of virality. So for kicks, I just put some money down and boosted it and I got a lot more virality. But I'm thinking because it was a natural post that was already getting a lot of attention that it was boosted even better. So if it has a lot of attention, it may or may not. You gotta play around with it. To answer Shannon's question though, it's better for you to go to your comments when someone replies to your comment or comments on your post to reply and acknowledge them right then and there. That shows the other viewers also that you care and that you're not just posting and running, that you are actually responding and, ch and talking to people and appreciate that they gave you their time that day. So for your affinity and your virality, it is better for you to be able to post directly on those comments so that you can um, build that relationship with people. And it does boost your affinity, especially if you do it in a faster time and Facebook was looking for five minutes. So just try to really focus on that as well. But as far as um, then boosting the post so, and then tagging their name, that's up to you because how, if you are gonna have multiple people commenting, why are you choosing one person to tag their name on it? it, it doesn't really make as much sense. So I would suggest those actions. If anybody else has any two cents, of course, put them there because we're all in this together. No one's an expert. We're all figuring it out. So she's not talking about ad posting. She meant as far as commenting and affinity. Okay. So I, I know I'm not talking about ads either. I did talk about ads, but I'm talking about a post. So in a post, she's asking, if she should reply directly on that person's comment or should she create and boost that post and then tag the person. And that was my um, my sense of giving her that two cents of, I think it's best if you stay engaged with the people that are commenting within the post and it, and it doesn't make sense to create that new post and tagging a new person. So that's my two cents. And again, you guys can take it or leave it and still do whatever you want. And if you've got a different perspective, of course, do what works for you, okay? Any other questions? Or do you guys have a question now you wanna ask before I go to the next audio? I've got five, so I've got three more to go. If you have a question, feel free to comment down below and we can, of course, jump into it. And appreciate those of you who are just jumping on in. You can't tag people. There are three ways to reply without she has versus commenting below versus directly replying a comment below. No, replying on their comment. So you want to reply on their comment. Um, for those of you just jumping on, my name is Christine and I help independent contractors and entrepreneurs figure out how to effectively make systems that duplicate within their team. Because if you can get the core activities for your business into a system and keep it super simple, then that's going to be able to duplicate and help your team with success. So when you reply, it will show the post at the top of other people's Facebook pages. So this is... This is the definite part. You guys are helping out with your two cents as well. That's what she meant. I think she misunderstood. Now she got it. <laughs> Reply on the comment. Yes. So if the post is there, someone commented, there's going to be multiple people commenting. You go to the person that commented and there's a little like and a reply button right next to it. You click on reply, write your reply to the person and then tag their name also again right there. That is what Facebook wants you to do. They want you to interact with people who are interacting on your content. So that's what they want you to do. That will give you a better viewpoint for, for Facebook, if that makes sense, okay? 
No, no, you can do totally doubt me. I'm never saying everybody has to believe me 100%. Everybody's got to follow who they believe. And uh, I could be wrong. I have been wrong. And so I'm still learning. I never claim to be an expert. I'm always in learning mode. So hopefully that makes sense for you guys as well. All right. So you guys, um, what was that other question that you had? Uh, oh, you can't tag people. So tagging people is a crazy thing as well for uh, like pages is Sometimes you can't tag certain people if, for instance, they, they aren't another like page. So, for instance, Facebook always is off and on, and I can't give you the exact answer as to why sometimes I can tag someone from my like page and then why sometimes I can't tag someone from my like page. I don't really know exactly that answer, so hopefully um, if somebody else knows that answer, they can. But I personally don't know why because some days I can and some days I can't, and I don't know why. And it's all driving from my like page. All right, so let's go on to our next question. That's from Denise. Denise has a question, and here it is. Hi, Christine. This is Denise, and you can find me on Facebook at Denise.Krebs, the number two. My question is, what's the best way to build your new like page? If you're just starting out with a like page, what's the best way to build it? Thanks. Perfect. So thanks so much, Denise, again, for submitting this question. I really appreciate you guys going to speakpipe.com slash Christine Dwyer. So she's asking how to best build your like page. Now, to have a like page, you have to have a profile page. Everyone's going to take a different opinion and approach on should you keep your profile page active and should you create a separate like page for just your business. My my thoughts and direction with building a like page, depending on what type of a business you are. So if you're an independent contractor business where you are, of course, working for yourself, but you represent another company, so like network marketing or so, is you need to brand you. So if you open up, say, for instance, a like page, and then all you do is start talking about the business stuff because you want to keep that private from your profile page, that's not effective because then in viewers' eyes, your Facebook like page is basically a sales page, and they know that. They know that if they go there, they're just going to be sold too. They're not going to get value of information. The other, no volume? I have no volume. You guys can't hear me? Let me know. Can you hear me? Test, test, test. I'm fine. Okay. So the thing is that when you are using social media, it's social media. People need to know you for you. So even if you are building a, a business page or you're using your like page as a business, which I do as well, I put my life on there too. So I don't hide that I have kids. I don't hide um, troubles that I have in real life. I put my life out there, but the predominant amount of content what I put out there creates conversation, helps people with a problem, gives them an idea, passes on great information. That's typically what I'll do. So how do you actually build then your Facebook page? The best way to do it is, of course, have one, open it up, a like page, and then a technique is you can, on your profile page, is to not keep that page updated with information so much of value and content, but to put your best content on your like page. So you can still put content over on your profile page, but if you are sharing something that is just oh so good and juicy, then you want to tease people on your profile page and say, hey, I just put this over there on my like page. Go and check it out. Another way, of course, to build your like following is, of course, to offer amazing and great content. If it's content that people need, love, they will share it. And the more that it's shared, then the virality of it is other people are going to see it and then see like, oh, who's this person? And then they're going to want to follow you as well. So if you're putting out really good stuff that people want to see, then that's where they're going to be able to see it. Now, share your like page. You can, of course, tag yourself if you can tag yourself in different places on your profile page. Um, if you have that ability, I don't know exactly sure. But the biggest way to build your like page are to push people from your profile page over to your like page. Let them know what's going on over there. The second is, of course, offer amazing value and content. The third is run Facebook ads where you are giving away something that your target market um, wants and it's directed to your like page, that they'll go there, they'll see that you're giving away a free report on X, Y, and Z, they're now going to get that free report and they're going to like you. The other side of it all 
is to continue to, the final part of it all is to continue to go and um, have a lots of conversations on other people's pages. Do not go on other people's pages and promote yourself. That is the worst thing you can do as an entrepreneur. So you want to go and support a lot of other people. Go in uh, uh, pages that you spend time. So for instance, your magazines that you like, as well as the businesses that you support, go there and start talking in those comments as well. Because when you start to become seen more, people are gonna click on your name and see who you are, and then they're gonna to go to your page. So it's just continual but consistency is what's gonna build your business. So I know you guys were chatting, I don't know if it was directly to me or just amongst yourselves, but if you have more questions or if this is good, let me know, but you can tap some hearts and all, let me know. Perfect, yes, I agree. This is making me think more about a like page. Sydney, I would suggest get going. You got to open a like page, especially if you view yourself for the future. I never make actions in my business that are just short term that will just kind of get me by right now. You have to look at every action you're doing is for that longevity, that future of where do you see yourself. So if you see yourself building a huge business, then you definitely want to make sure that you have a like page if it's going to be around for that long. Reconcile your personal page and your like page. I'm not exactly sure about what that means. So maybe let me know a little bit more. Awesome. Cool. I wish I had a comb. That's all I know or hairspray. Perfect. I need to do the freemium from there. You totally. So if you're not sure how to create an opt-in page or a sign-up form for people to be able to sign up with you, you can go to my youtube.com slash Christine Dwyer and I did a scope about it that teaches you how to create what you're going to give away, how you're going to give it away, how to create the form, and how to set it up so that it's an auto delivery. And I also have a free option on there as well. So make sure you go to youtube.com slash Christine Dwyer and I did a Periscope all about that. All right, do you guys have a question before I move on to the next, the fourth question? We've got five total audio questions today. Good. Let's see what we're going to be talking about tonight while you guys are putting your little questions down there. I wrote it down. I can't remember where I put it, though. All right, let's go. All right, so we're moving up. We've got a question from Jody. Let's go, Jody. Here it goes. Hi, Christine. My name is Jody Hurt, and I have a question. Uh, in regards to one of the comments that was made during your Periscope tonight um, on the top 10 social media mistakes you're making that's, that are killing your business. And it is um, that the business that I have, which is called Healthy Heart Hypnosis, which I own by myself, um, is the name of the page that I use on Facebook. And the th posts that I make are generally just information, information on our subconscious minds, things that we can do regarding self-esteem, to build self-esteem in our children or build self-esteem in ourselves, and not really a sales pitch in any way. So I'm wondering, do you still think that it comes across as um, salesy or slimy to be using the name Healthy Heart Hypnosis as opposed to my own personal name? You can visit me on Facebook at Healthy Heart Hypnosis. Thanks so much. Bye. Great question. And I'm glad that Jody was on last night as well. So thanks so much, Jody, as well as for submitting your question. So we were talking about this last night when I went over the top 10 biggest mistakes business people make on social media that kill their business. And one of them was in regards to should you be branding your name? So Jody, should she have branded her name Jody, whatever her last name was? Or should she just be using her healthy heart hypnosis as her branded name? So there's, again, different methodologies on what you agree with. But again, you have to think about when you are building your brand, you're building you. So wherever you go, your name goes. So it doesn't matter if you uh, jump a different company, you now still have your name and you're not now stuck with a certain name that... Um, would would kind of conflict with what you're doing now, if that makes sense. Now, I can only assume by her business, as well as what she was talking about, that she is a, an entrepreneur working for herself, that she's not connected to another company. So like myself, I'm in network marketing, and the biggest mistake that I see a lot of the entrepreneurs in our business do is they tattoo and label themselves the logos and the products of the company that we can sell the products for. Well, I can sell their products 
but that's not my company. My company is me. So me is me. So I'm not going to brand myself a name that's relative to them. So I'm going to, of course, brand myself myself because I'm teaching people how to be an entrepreneur and a business success and not how to sell that product better. That's not my goal. So Jodi, I can only assume that she's in a business for herself and that is her own business and her brand. So I would suggest that does work for her because it is exclusively what she does in her own entrepreneur business. So that would make sense. But again, I would suggest in general, if you can, for if you're working for someone else or a network marketing company of some sorts, that you brand your name. So if I post personal stuff on my like page, then I'm posting the same things as my personal page. No, I do not suggest that you put the same content on your profile page and your like page because again, why does someone need to go to your like page then if you're going to put the stuff over there as well? So you want to create different content and if you really are serious about building a like page and then living in a like page, then you need to allow your profile page to be a little bit more quiet than what you put on your like page. So for a um, couple of years back, I want to say about four years, five years ago back, um, I listened to my mentor and she said, make your profile page a graveyard. Don't ever post over there. And we even put like shaded out pictures of ourselves saying, I'm not here anymore, you know, as the avatar. And then we basically sucked it up and bit our nails going, oh my gosh, I am only on the like page and all I've got is 200 followers. Nobody's here. What am I going to do? Well, 61,000 followers later, it worked. So I, I don't say to never post on your profile page. So what I've been doing lately on my profile page is just promoting Periscope because I don't know if Facebook hates the word Periscope and if it's blocking those posts. So I'm not going to put that on my like page because I'm kind of scared to use the P word on my like page, but I'm just going to put it on my profile page. So. You can use both, definitely. So Blasi says she's using both. If you've got enough value and content to be able to put between two, then do it. But don't replicate, okay? Yeah. Oh, hi there, Mr. Brett Johnson 11. He's the hangry chef. You definitely can go and check out his periscopes. He's hysterical and um, he doesn't edit himself. <laughs> I love my Brett. So Christine Johnson says Facebook hates Brett. No, I don't say that. I can only assume that. I don't know. I'm just thinking it would because Facebook has live streaming and just by watching other professionals as well, including my mentor, Shalene, is she is scared to use the P word too. So I don't know if she knows something more than that. So I'll use the Periscope word on my profile page, but um, I'll use my, my real content over on my like page. So is that helpful? Good. Oh, now it's the Brett scope. <laughs> he hijacked my scope. <laughs> It's okay. I love Brett. He he can because he's hysterical. He's so funny. And he wears good socks. All right. You guys good? Any questions? Thank you so much. Uh, I appreciate you sharing my live fit out loud. That's so awesome. Thank you so much there, Anthony. Appreciate it. You guys got any more questions before I play our last audio? Oh, Brett sent you all. Yay. That's why we got a big bump. Thank you so much, Hangry Chef. Brett is awesome. And I really appreciate you all. I love him so much. Of course. Brett, this is crazy. <laughs> it's okay. Next time I'm with Brett, maybe maybe I'll cook with him because I don't cook. I'm like Shalene with it. It's bare bones basic stuff. And Brett does all this like spices and stuff. It's a lot of chopping and chopping is like, no, like simple. Just make food simple. And so maybe I'll be a sous chef one day. Hey, let's do the last question and then we'll finish up with yours, but I'm playing live audio. So for those of you who just jumped on, thank you so much. And I appreciate Brett Johnson also sending you guys over here. If you're not following Brett Johnson, it's Brett Johnson 11. And that of course is, um, he is the hangry chef. So he does a lot of cooking, but he does a lot more than that. Of course, in life, he's a, a fantastic business entrepreneur. Like his brain is insane, um, for that stuff. But, um, of course you may also recognize his wife is Shalene Johnson. And she, of course, both him and Shalene have been my mentors for, um, past 15 years. So, Let's move on to the last question. For those of you just jumping on, my name is Christine and I help independent contractors and entrepreneurs figure out how to do business, boil it down into cliff notes, create a system that actually will duplicate amongst their team so that they can have success and other people can have success. That's been the biggest thorn in the side that a lot of entrepreneurs don't realize is you have to have a system for people to plug into on the core activities that you do in your business. Because if you don't, everyone's just kind of throwing darts trying to figure out stuff of what works. If everyone's on the same wheel, it's going to work. 
So let's get going in the fifth live audio question. And then I'm going to come back here and also give you guys more question and answer. So our final question is from Rochelle. So let me give you Rochelle's question. Hi, Christine. My name is Rochelle Sanchez and my website is nowsyourchance.org. I go under the handle Rochelle Sanch on Periscope and my question is actually about accountability. So I'm wondering, what are your best tips on finding like-minded people at your same level, whether in business, like via masterminds or in like your personal goals? For example, I am scoping every day about what it's like to lose the last 10 pounds after having lost my first 20 already. And it's hard to find people who are still in the journey, who are still a work in progress like I am right now. So what are your best tips for finding accountability partners for business and for lifestyle goals? Thanks. That was a great question from Rochelle. So again, thanks so much, Rochelle, for submitting that. And if you want to submit your audio questions and have them played live here on Periscope, as well as on my podcast, so I have a podcast called The Platinum Edge, you can just go to my speak pipe. So speak pipe dot com slash Christine Dwyer and submit your question in audio and I totally can um, play that and answer your questions for you all. I don't know everything, but I am a studier and I'm always trying to figure out how to do processes better and to help it be easier for you as well. And I will teach you anything that I can as well. Thank you so much, Brooke, for putting my URL there so people can really get there quick as, as possible. So Rochelle's question was fantastic question because this is actually a really common problem. I actually did a scope about it about how to line yourself up with the right mentors and that's part of her question I'm gonna talk about all of it and you can of course go to my youtube.com slash Christine Dwyer and you can search for the scope that talks about how to find a mentor to work with um, in your business but the the best thing that I would suggest when you are trying to find accountability for your life as well as business and you're trying to see uh, uh, find other people who are like you and and lift you and are on the same path in the direction First, my first tip is to really write down or figure out exactly where in your mind, where do you go? So where do you spend your time? So if you're going to be spending your time shopping at that store or going on that vacation destination or um, going to those specific restaurants or attending those sporting events, if you spend your time at certain locations, a lot of the people that are just like you are just like you and they're there. So those people have the same interests. So you really want to find out where you're going is other people are there and they've probably got a lot of the same interests as well that they would be a great person to start up those conversations so it's about having multiple conversations finding things in common and having a good interest with them and that's where you never know where it can move you to so that's my first tip um the second one is is where is like on your list of where do you want to go where do you want to take your next level to where would you like to spend more time so basically you're trying to move into the past of where you want to go and a lot of the times the people who um, that have already achieved it are spending time there so if you are trying to become more successful in your business go to the places so the Facebook groups or the like pages or just again locally wherever there's local businesses where are the people that have already achieved what you're looking to achieve. If you go and spend your time there with them, then you're of course gonna be able to strike up more conversations and find that common interest in other people that you like. And my third and final tip is, is to specifically go find the people and you're gonna discover them online, especially it's super simple, and find the connection. So for instance, um, a lot of people on here are already finding that you may already have a connection with someone. We may already know like people. So find the connections of people you currently follow and other people that they follow, and you'll be able to find that inner webbing, that web, spider web connection. Here's the thing though. Here's your best tips. So say for instance, you find someone that you really admire, you love their advice, you love their character, you love what they offer, you love everything about them and they've achieved what you're looking to achieve and you want to have more accountability and you want to be more present with them. The best things that you can do is one, be their biggest fan. So support them. So when they put up their content, you are acknowledging it, you're commenting on it and you are just giving them more than just 
supers. You're really giving them food for thought on some of the posts and content that they've posted. You're giving them how it's impacted your life, helping people get more of a sense of this person is legit. That's the second part of it all, is that when you are their biggest fan, then you're showing them and showing other people that this is a, a person that's actually going to help the group, the culture. So do you have in situations of, say, a group that you manage or uh, in, in a team sense where when you put up something or your teaching point, you have some followers that follow you, but they help answer questions, much like you guys are doing here in Scope World, that they help answer questions for you on some of the questions you didn't see or couldn't get to, or they help give and provide more information, like giving the URL links um, to pass people on. They're like super helpful. They help without you asking them to. Do you have that? Because that's exactly what you want to be. Yeah, you're a team. And so when you are trying to get connected to someone that can provide you more mentorship or more accountability or just get you involved in that world of other people who are like that, when you can be a big support and help cultivate the culture that they have and be a super helper, helper that's going to let you rise above and be seen as that person's got good character. I like them because they're helping me. They're helping me manage the tribe, the culture. And uh, that's, that's pretty much what some of the greatest tips that I can give you to be able to move to having more accountability and finding other people who are like you and have that accountability. Perfect. Be the fan you want to have. I love that advice there. Is it Vigil Lowaki? <laughs> totally, I agree. That's great advice. So I'm all done with my audio questions. If you guys have any final questions that you want to ask in comments, let me know. But again, you can go to speak pipe.com slash Christine Dwyer and ask your question there. And if you want to find out more about what I do, I do for a living, you can go to livefitoutloud.com. And you can, of course, get that there, uh, a video that lets you know exactly what I do. But other than that, I appreciate you guys being on here and I would love to answer any more questions that you guys have. I will be back on tonight. So if you are going to be jumping back on tonight, we are going to be um, scoping tonight. And I wrote down what I was talking about tonight, but I don't have my page here in front of me. <laughs> I took it with me to the hair salon, so it's out in my book. But I've got a great topic tonight. <laughs> I can't remember what it is. Um, but come on tonight. I usually like to jump on around 8.39 Central Standard Time. So that's around 9.30, 10 Eastern Standard Time. And the reason I do it is because my kids go to bed. Of course, I have to make sure I'm present there. What's my number one team building tip? That's a perfect question. And I can, of course, um, use that as a great topic to talk about. About for future Scott, uh, scopes as well. That's what I love is when you guys put comments in there and let me know what you want to talk about in the future, I go back and review them. But the, the thing with number one tip of team building is you have to make people feel like they matter and that they're a part and that you're not an expert just discounting them, that they're not of value. So honestly, lifting people, recognizing them, including them in the process is the easiest part to be able to build a team because then that is what builds the deep rooted connection and the culture of your organization. So hopefully that is a good little tip there for you. Awesome. I'm glad you guys have been uh, very conversational. I love this. Do you like this content where I did those audios? Let me know if you do with a thumbs up. Let me know that. Perfect. All right, so we got how do you get excited and interested about what your how you get people? So um, the thing with getting people excited about what you do, you can't make someone excited about what you do, right? You have to be excited about them and what they want to do. And if they want to take themselves into a goal and a direction and they're not really sure the path, you can help get them excited about being a resource for them that may be able to help them get connected towards that path. But you can't get someone excited about what you do. It's like, you know, whatever, if I'm eating that Ezekiel bread. So I eat Ezekiel bread for breakfast every day. Some people love it, some people hate it. I can't make someone be excited about it and love it because I do. It's Ezekiel bread. You either do or you don't or you learn to love it. So you can't make someone excited about what you do. You got to be excited for them and what they want to do and where their goals are and that you can help facilitate and help them get towards that. Yes, be excited yourself. Be interested, not interesting. Totally. Oh, you just had some uh, Christine had. Christine's had Ezekiel bread today. <laughs> 
I haven't tried their pasta. No, I haven't had that. I For pasta, I'm just, mm, I need like pasta and sauce and Parmesan cheese. <laughs> That's what I love. How do I deal with emotional burnout in the beginning and building before you are very successful? Ooh, that's a great question because I was just, when I was at the hair salon, what I was really trying to nail down is my itinerary for my conference that I put on in November. It's called the Platinum Edge. And I was putting a lot of the content and topics and the speakers together in the order that I want them to speak. Now, the that was actually one of the top questions that came to my mind when I was trying to really nail down what one of my speakers is going to speak about because she's an amazing speaker. She can speak about many different topics, but I want her to really speak on a topic that's needed. And one of them that came to my mind was that a lot of people do get burned out. So for instance, um, being in the business for a very long time, you just kind of get sick of that. Like it feels like a hamster wheel and then you get frustrated with some of your people that you can emotionally just get burned out. And those are some of the tips that, you know what, you got to find a way to be able to dig yourself out and find motivation to not be in that place. As well as those people who've never achieved success really and then they get burned out from trying so hard that they don't want to try anymore. So there's different levels of that. So I can't really give an exact answer on it, but basically in general, you just have to when you reach a burnout, stop trying to do too much and stop trying to do all of the activity that is not producing results. Focus on what you really love. So when, it, when the big picture clears, if you look at the big picture, what part of that business do you really love? And then focus on that again and don't worry about the other stuff because the other stuff will get reignited or you'll do a different interpretation on it after. Okay? Appreciate that. Never give up. Totally. I appreciate you guys jumping on here and giving me your comments as well and all your little hearts there. That's so kind of you. All right. Avoid the burnout. All right. Appreciate it. So I'm going to end this and um, we're going to be jumping back on tonight again. I'm going to go into another topic and I'm so sorry. I wish I could pre-promo pre it, but I know it was a good one and it was one that you guys asked a lot last night. So I'm going to be talking again around, I'd say 930 Eastern Standard Time is usually the time that I can jump on because my kids are just going to bed. So I hope to see you guys then. And if you can click share and let people know that this was a good topic, you can of course share it. And also in comments and let me know, was that good? Do you like those audios being played because I of course want to continue to offer them if you have questions we can definitely 100% do that once a week but if I do two scopes a day we could probably do it a couple times a week as well I had a bunch that I couldn't play because of course so many of you guys submitted but um, I want to be able to feature you either here or on my podcast the platinum edge and I appreciate that. Thank you so much. I definitely will enjoy my kids. They're off to karate right now. So I'm free right now. <laughs> so thank you again. Thanks so much. And I will chat with you guys then later.